All right, cheat sheet part three is going to start getting harder now. What we're going to talk about here is the amount of time it takes for the moon to do a revolution versus the amount of time it takes for the moon to go through all of its phases. Now, earlier we talked about the Earth Science Reference Tables telling us, if you forget, it's first one that you guys have seen, one day. How long does the moon take to do one spin around the Earth, one orbit around the Earth? And that answer is 27.3 days. Now, that might feel like if I were to say, how long is a complete cycle of phases? The logical answer would be like, well, if we have phases because there's orbits and an orbit takes 27.3 days, then the phases must take 27.3 days. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And this is confusing, and this is honestly something that drives me nuts about New York State Earth Science, is that they say, hey, here's all the numbers you need for astronomy. You can, you can nail our test with all of those numbers, but there's one more number that we're gonna make you memorize, and this is that number. Um, here's the idea, it's, it's a tiny bit complicated. So we'll do like, at the top we'll do like, here's what I really need. If you want the complicated story, it's that by the time the moon does this one orbit over the course of 27.3 days, we can't forget that the earth has also spun in its orbit. Um, it, in, and its orbit is, is reasonably large compared to the size of the moon's orbit. So it's moving pretty fast. It goes a pretty good distance over the course of those 27.3 days. So the idea is that by the time the moon is back in this position, where it's like, if I superimpose a, like a clock over the top of this, like noon, three, six, nine, it's at like the four o'clock position, right? So by the time the moon does one orbit, it's back to like the four o'clock position right there. But that's not phase wise in the same like relative position of the sun. I started this one, the moon is back behind the earth, you know, behind quote unquote. So we're missing that much time in order for it to catch back up to get there. And that amount of missing time is 2.2 days. It takes an extra 2.2 days for the moon to basically catch back up. All right, so we should make like a quick note of that. Um, moon needs an extra. 2.2 days to get back times the Earth and phases. Start over again. Okay, and it's because by this time the Earth has moved. So we should note that over here. Earth moves. It's like it's easy to picture if we go back to like this, it's easy to picture the moon just going around and around and around, and then we nail all these phases. Life would be easy if that's the case. But remembering that this happens is the uh, is the difficult part of the equation here. Okay, so therefore, here's what we're left with: one moon revolution equals twenty-seven point three days. However, you can always get that any time of day or night out of your earth science reference tables. That number is there for you, available. One cycle of phases equals the 27.3 days and those extra 2.2 days for a total of 29.5 days. That unfortunately has to be in your brain. Again, I don't like that New York does that to you. It says we're going to give you all the numbers, but memorize that one. But hey, that's the case. That's the world we live in. Okay. Um, and it's going to be on my test. Like it might be on the region, so it's going to be on my test. It's going to be on this lab. I promise it's going to be there. So that number we got to jam in our head, remembering that it's because of the earth moving in the meantime. All right. That's cheat sheet number three. One to go. Keep it up.